Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Marco Tribute colored pencils. And I'm kind of excited about this review because um, I'm really pleased with how they performed and um, that's always nice. It's always nice when um, when you're pleasantly surprised by a new product. Now I have never tried any of the Marco products uh, so this brand was new to me. The Tribute line is their higher end pencil. Now they have a few different varieties of pencils I've seen available. And these, this was sent to me for free from the Anstel Stationery store. Um, they distribute a lot of Marco products, Phoenix products. Um, they handle a lot of the um, pencils that are made in China that are like the brute funers that are quite popular right now. And um, and they asked me if I'd like to take a look at these. Now this set is 120 and they, they call them oil colors. However, they to me felt a lot more like wax based pencils. The Marco Tributes also come in a water soluble version, but I haven't tried those so I can't speak to them, but you may want to just double check if you see this review and you really like them, just make sure you're getting the the um, oil base or you know the the non water sol soluble version if that's what you're what you're interested in. So let's take a look at the tin here. It's um, it's actually really sturdy and really pretty, and it comes with a cardstock belly band on it, and I think that's to probably um, so they can actually put probably a little extra information and to keep it keep the the tin from maybe shifting or opening in travel. This came very well packaged in bubble wrap, so. Um, the tin is in perfect condition. It's got a nice matte finish with the exception of the gold leafing. And we've got an artwork by Gustav Klimt here on the front. And you may be familiar with this line of pencils because they came out with a version. Um, well, I don't know when they came out with it. I saw it on the Art Gear Guide. They did, um, he did a, re Harry did a review on that. And it had like, um, I think it was like 10 boxes maybe. There were... Uh, 10 boxes of eight pencils and they all each collection of pencils was a color theme kind of like the China colors by Phoenix color that I reviewed um, a couple months ago and each box had a reproduction of a great master's work and then the colors inside like Van Gogh was the blue box and Degas was the um, I think the earth tone box and so you got to like learn a little bit about art, art history it was beautifully packaged it was very extra you know um, and they were a little bit on the pricey side these are not a budget pencil so I just kind of want to come right out there and say that this I just looked at the price on um, AliExpress I have not seen these available elsewhere in this for in this um, tin um, it's a hundred and twenty nine dollars and thirty cents today for the 120 set um, but they do have smaller sets if you want to try out a smaller set it has a five-star rating and 11 reviews on the website if you want to go um, want to go check that out but they also on that listing have the water soluble ones as well so these at a, at a little over a dollar a pencil would not be what I would call a budget pencil it's more what I would call a mid-range to artist quality price wise pencil so it's something you definitely want to consider um, the uh, lid is hinged uh, what I usually do is I will take a tray out and put it in the um, in the lid and then I'll put another tray out to the side just to give myself a little more space. Um, it has a little blurb in here that appears to be grammatically correct. I'm not going to read it because guess what? That's way over here and my eyes are way back here and um, I'm 45 years old and probably should get some reading glasses. <laughs> but uh, um, but th that was nice. They took the, the time. A lot of times when you get pencils from China, there'll be grammatical errors or spelling errors. I didn't read every name on these pencils so I can't vouch for anything. Um, the spelling doesn't really matter to me. I might get a chuckle out of it, but uh, for $129, you want the stuff on the tin to be spelled right, especially if you're getting it as a gift. Uh, you also get a little brochure in here. Oh, and in here, um, it tells you about the Marco Tribute line and how they're paying tribute to the different great masters, and it shows you that uh, that set that I mentioned to you. Now, if you're curious about that set, uh, like I said, the Art Gear Guide has a review on that, and actually, I reached out to Harry when I was swatching these because I had a couple issues that I didn't know were if it was like normal in the line or if I got maybe a set that had been dropped. So um, I really appreciate Harry's candor with me um, about these pencils and uh, definitely go check out his review. I always recommend you listen to a couple of reviews before you make a big purchase um, or, or even a small purchase because it's going to sit in your studio. If you don't use it, it's going to sit there and collect dust. So there's no point to waste money if it's not going to do what you want it to do. And this does have a swatch card here, which I didn't fill out because I wanted a larger swatch. So we'll see those swatches in a second. There's a piece of vellum here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of the vellum other than just aesthetic. 
aesthetics. There's no foam. I think a, a piece of foam on there might have been a good idea because as I was um, as I was swatching these, I was getting quite a bit of chipping and dustiness to the pencil leads. However, once I sharpened them, that was gone. They they performed beautifully after that. What I think might have happened, and that's why I reached out to Harry because. Um, I wanted to ask him if, if the, his pencils were like chipping and feeling really dusty and crumbling, the tips were crumbling on him, and he did not have that experience at all. And it might be the packaging on the cardboard boxes, because on my Phoenix color I had that same packaging, and everything was perfect. And I think it's just because they're held so snugly in there and they have a little foam like ribbon up along the edge to protect the tips. I think that's the difference. So anyway, after con after Harry confirmed that, that his pencils didn't have any, any issues like that, they were beautiful, he really liked them, um, then I reached out to Anstel Stationery to let them know um, that they might want to check other boxes because as I lifted out the trays, I did notice a little bit of, um, you know, not a lot, just a little bit of dust in the um, in the packaging. But then when I took all the trays out, I could see some I could see some dusting in the bottom here. So I think that maybe these might have been a little roughly handled in the factory because they're a distributor. Install is a Drew's distributor. They don't make these, so they re so I contacted them and I said, these pencils, some of them were crumbling and they were fine once I sharpened them, but there was one pencil, this one right here, that I had to sharpen quite a ways before it would get past the break. Um, but it, it was so beautifully packaged and so carefully wrapped that I can't imagine it got damaged in travel from Anstel to me. Um, she actually reached out to Marco and Marco said that it may have been um, damaged before they were put in the tin because the tin has absolutely no mars or marks or dents or anything in it so they were they're aware of that and they're going to check all of the boxes before they go out so long story short i reached out to harry first because i just wanted to make sure this wasn't a flaw in the design and then i reached out to anstel and they're gonna gonna check the boxes they're very responsive i have found now of course i'm not a paying customer they've reached out to me for review so you know weigh that however you want to weigh that obviously you know a company may give me a little more attention if they know I'm reviewing their product not because I'm fancy pants or anything but you know but um but other than, but I just wanted to get that out of the way because I was experiencing that now if I was a paying customer I would say can you send me another peppermint because I think this is unacceptable the first time I use it to be sharpening it down this far and they probably would or they probably even send me out a new set um, obviously I'm not gonna request that because um, I'm reviewing these and, uh, and I didn't pay for it to begin with uh, this comes with two sharpeners and I did use one of the sharpeners and worked fine it's nothing you know fancy but it actually is really nice when these are included because there's been many times where I've gone to go craft with some friends and I just I'm brain dead by the evening because I've been doing art all day I will bring like a set of pencils that I'm going to be swatching or testing out um, and like something I've stamped or drawn and I always forget a sharpener so I love that they put a sharpener in there and it seems to not damage the pencils and work just fine. Um, these are beautiful pencils. They, ha they have barcodes on them and I was very excited when I saw barcodes on them because I'm like, oh, maybe they're going to offer, oh, maybe they offer open stock somewhere because you never know um, when a product gets shipped. A lot of times um, there are products that are made in China, like the Paul Rubens products. Um, and they're wonderful and they're, and they're artist grade, however, we can't get the refills, although now I saw on Amazon you can get individual pans, which is nice. But, um, you know, of course, domestically, they've got so many more consumers and they can sell all that stuff open stock. So I was kind of curious if they might sell these open stock, but the barcodes are the exact same numbers between the different colors. So it just shows me that that's the barcode of this particular set and not um, and not uh, individual barcodes for open stock pencils. So that's kind of a bummer. Sometimes if a pencil gets really popular, the menu, the uh, seller will offer, offer open stock. And what they do, I think, is they just order a few extra packs to break apart and, and do that with. Um, because it would really be nice to get these open stock. They're a little over a dollar a piece in sets. So it would be nice to be able to like buy if you used up a pencil for like $1.50 or something. But I, I really don't think that's in the cards. You know, if I ran the world, if I was the queen of the world, then that's what I would do. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe it's probably very expensive to do that. But um, it makes me happy. The color selection is beautiful. Um, let's take a look at the swatches. I found that pretty easy to lift out. They're a little bit wider on the edges from a lot, a lot of other brands, so I did find it easy to get the trays in and out. Um, I don't like cases. I know a lot of a lot of people just buy a case and put them right in a case afterwards. I personally prefer to either keep them in their tin or put them um, in jars or something so they take up, don't take up so much space. But um, 
yeah, I'm pretty happy with the packaging. I like the tin. It's all really sturdy. Now let's take a look at some swatches and then we'll look at some artwork. So um, I always compare and I know some some reviewers don't like to compare. They don't like to say what these pencils are are closest to. But I think that's um, I think that's really nice to know because you might have something in your stash. It's so very similar. And why buy the same thing twice or why buy almost the same thing twice? So that's why I do comparisons not to. Um, uh, not to give a slight to any product, just to, you know, make you guys informed consumers. And I am lucky that I get to try out a lot of products, both things that I've purchased and things that I've been sent to review. And then I will go back and pull them out again and try and swatch them side by side again. So I have quite a collection of pencils in the room of Horde. And the reason I keep them is because I can go through and I can compare them. So here is the entire collection of the Marku Tributes on black and on white. So this is uh, swatched on white drawing paper. I'm sorry for the jiggly camera. Um, this is it swatched on white Hannah Mule Shazan, Shazan, Shazan sketch paper. I think it's sketch paper. I think Shizen is like German for sketch. Um, I feel so fancy. Um, and this is on black Cantonese tints and this is on the rough side. I tend to prefer to work on the rough side of paper sometimes just because I feel like it's going to grab a little bit more color. I love the opacity of this. So this when I when I swatch these out other than the crumbling issues that I was that I was having and that was making me feel a little nervous about um I love the opacity uh, opacity of these and I didn't have the crumbling after I sharpened them. So I do want to I do want to let you know that. And and I had really good luck with my electric sharpener. Um that's generally what I use cuz I have never gotten the habit of turning the sharpener and not the pencil. So I find I get way less breakage in all my pencils if I use an electric sharpener. Um you get a really beautiful range of colors, a nice range of reds. I like a range of reds. I know some people always think there's too many reds in sets, but I love the reds because I do a lot of um, flowers and fruit and things like that. Gorgeous sets, uh, a gorgeous range of blues and greens, a decent amount of yellows, a decent amount of earth tones. I do feel like there could be some more um, lighter, more creamier earth tones. There is some kind of uh, muted tones in here. Um, my one criticism would be that the um, if you look in some of these really pastel tones, they show up just as kind of like white or light gray. You don't see the the color. You only see the white um, in a lot of these. They just they're just very muted, as opposed to like a Holbein pastel, which has quite a bit of um, of I don't have a lot of those. I only have a couple. I have a, actually I have a thirty six set of Holbein pencils that my friend Jane gave me because she had a duplicate set. And um, and so I, I actually did compare them to the whole binds. I'll show you that in a minute. But um, with all of these these grays and earth tones. Now keep in mind I don't have all the grays and earth tones from Holbein to compare it to but um, looking at this color on the white, oh these are so pretty. Looking them on the black, they're also kind of like eh. Um, so that, that would be my only criticism. I don't think it's that bad even but um, I love the opacity on this and I think that, that they're really gorgeous pencils. Now I did, when I was first using these, I was thinking, man, what do these remind me of? And at first I thought they reminded me of the koi -Noor colored pencils because they have kind of a dry, almost clay-like feeling to them. Um, they're smooth but but drier, you know what I mean? They didn't feel quite as dry as a koi -Noor, but I but they felt close enough that I decided I had to use them side by side. So I used the koi -Noor there and right after doing the big ball here with the... Um, with the Marco tributes and uh, no, they didn't feel the same. My memory, my memory was wrong. So I don't trust my memory when I'm comparing pencils. I don't say these are just like blah, 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 unless I have them in my hand and I swatch them right next to each other because my memory can be faulty. I think everybody's can because between the time that I've used that pencil, I've used so many other sets of pencils and so many different pieces of artwork in between that you just, you're, you've kind of, your palette gets cleansed and you forget exactly the properties of these pencils. Um, so then I thought, you know what, I'm going to try these against the Phoenix color that came in the books because when, when I got the Phoenix color set, I actually had contacted Harry again. Um, I love his channel, the Art Gear Guide, wonderful color pencil reviews and marker reviews. But I contacted him and I said, do you think these could be the same pencil? And he swatched them out side by side. He goes, boy, boy they really feel similar. Um, he goes, I think they could be the same. They feel very similar. So I don't have like that box set. So I, sw I tried my Phoenix color pencils here and they felt similar. But one thing I noticed was that the Phoenix color pencils will dissolve with, um, with water a little bit. And these are very water resistant. In fact, I've got a... Um, let me grab a brush and some water here. 
and we might get some movement, but I went through and, um, you know, usually the purples are the big culprits as far as, you know, moving, and no, they're, they're being just fine. Phoenix color, I noticed, moved. It wasn't that, uh, that water resistance, so well, let's... You know, these are very water uh, water resistant, so I think that would be really um, handy for people that like to do, um, well, I don't know, to tell you the truth, even if a pencil kind of, I've never had an issue with my pencil leaching color up through the, like, another product. The only the only exception, actually, I, I will say, some really bright purple Spirofarben pencils I had, the colors leached up. Speaking of Spirofarben, I've never tried the Marco Renoir, which is a very popular line of pencil by the Marco company. Um, but And I've heard they're very similar to the Spear of Farben. And I have the Spear of Farben, and those are almost identical to my um, my Cezanne pencils from Creative Mark. And I just the feeling of those pencils versus these, they're very different. Those are more soft and, and, um, and slick feeling. They're more translucent, and they do you know, they do move with some water. These are very water resistant. They feel firmer, they feel waxy, and they're much more opaque. So I just want to put that out there as a, as a um, kind of, in case you have the Marco Renoir and you're wondering if these are similar. Now, of course, this is like algebra. So it's like, <laughs> it's like um, Cezanne plus Spear Farben equals Marco. Or, you know, if I have these two and I know the same as that one, then I'm, you know, I'm triangulating at that review. I don't have the Renoirs, but from what I've gathered from other people. Uh, so what I've, uh, the notes that I took here, a water resistant, nice and opaque. They feel more wax based and oil based to me because of their water resistance and their opacity. Um, they are compatible with odorless mineral spirits. I used, I used, um, Gamzol here to blend and, um, I did find them to be a little bit dusty, but after I sharpened them that first time, I, I didn't really find them to be all that dusty. So that's something that I noticed. Now here is a comparison between these pencils and Holbein. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit more so we can see a nice big swatch. And, um, so this row here is Holbein. This row here is Marco Tribute. This row here is Holbein, and this row here is Marco Tribute. So I have um, the 36 set of Holbein. I can show you that right here. And I did my best to match colors, and it's funny that even with 120 colors, I did not have exact matches for all of these, but I got as close as I could. And you can see that the opacity is actually quite similar between the Holbein and the Marco, Holbein, Marco, Holbein, Marco. Um, the lay down, the Holbeins do feel a little nicer. They're a little bit um, creamier. They're a little bit beefier. Like I feel like I'm getting a lot more pigment down at once and they're, they're a touch softer. So these are a bit firmer than Holbein. Um, the white is really good actually. I was very surprised at how good the white was on the Marco Tributes because usually um, when you have p pencils from China, the, the whites and blacks are not really that powerful, but this white is really good. In fact, I wish that the set had an extra white in it because I think you're going to go through that pretty quickly because it is so, um, has so much oomph. If you used up a pencil and you want to replace it, I think the pencil that would get you the closest would be a Holbein, but a Holbein is like for something open stock. I would go with a Prismacolor because a, a Prismacolor is much, much softer, but the opa it, it's a match with opacity. It's a match with water resistance. I think you would be happy with um, replacing any that you used up with a Prismacolor. Plus, Prismacolors are their whole, the, the whole body is colored, so it would look very, very similar. They don't have capped ends, though, but other than that, I don't think they would stick out in your um, in your case. Oh, there is something else I want to show you here on these pencils before we get to the artwork. But you can see, I mean, very similar to the Holbein Marco, Holbein Marco, Holbein Marco, Holbein Marco. Um, very similar color payout, very similar opacity. Um, I want to show you a one of these pencils because I want to show you the... Um, I'll get a light one and a dark one just so that we can see side by side. There is, um, they did take the step of when they're on a, when they are on a dark barrel writing in white. So it says purple 04. Um, then we've got the barcode, which I think is just helpful for if you are working in the factory and you're making sure they get in the right tin. Um, and then like on the light color barrels, they type, they write in black. It's very easy to read. Even like I had struggle reading on um, 
on pencils. I don't know if, I, if that'll focus in on that because there we go. Um, I struggle reading print on pencils a lot. I don't even say color names for the most part. I'm just like, you know, look for something similar. Um, and then on the other side, they do have the gold writing, but the gold writing, it looks pretty. It says tribute, master's collection, Marco, and then a little, um, a little symbol there. That's not stuff you need to read when you're working. It looks pretty. It's there for the, I think, for the fancy factor. But where the information you actually need might want to read, like if you like to swatch your colors and look at your color swatch and get that exact color, I don't. That's why I didn't even number my swatches. I just swatched them so you could see what they look like. I don't swatch my pencils for my own personal use, unless they're watercolor pencils. Um, that information you need to read is clear in a very high contrast um, contrast color, which I really appreciate. So that's something I want to mention because, um, you know, if it's, if you have a hard time seeing, you want to know you can read your, you can read your chart if you want to. I think that's important. I, I just struggle so much with the gold, <laughs> with the gold and silver writing when it's like the color name, like you can see on Prismacolor. I mean, that's impossible. It's so small. It's so blurry. You know, they didn't do a darker color, even though that's such a pale pink, you know, that's, that's so frustrating. It's a little bit better when you're on when you're on a darker one, but even so, the font's so small, it's just smushed together, and it's it's tough to read. So I appreciate the thought that went into that. So this is the artwork that I did with these pencils. This is um a ornament or a, I should say a decoration that was sitting on my windowsill, and I just love the texture of it. And I thought that'd be really fun to draw. Um, so I did, and here you can see there's quite a bit of a shine there. Um, I used fixative about, I used the uh, brush and pencil texture fixative after probably about six layers because I wanted to just brighten up the red a little bit. Um, so I sprayed it and then I let it dry and I came in with a little bit more. Um, it layered up pretty well. The colors were nice and opaque. I didn't have to add any white Prismacolor to it. This is all the Marco. My paper's a little curled because of the fixative. I rarely ever use fixative, but uh, when I do, I make up for it, and then the paper curled because <laughs> I used too much. But it didn't um, It didn't make any of my colors disappear, which was really nice. I just kind of added a little more highlight on top, but, um, but it worked really well. I didn't notice a lot of wax bloom, but I can see like the, my pencil strokes almost like brush strokes. Um, so I think that you might get some wax bloom with this. If you do, you can spray it with fixative or you can buff it with a soft cloth. Um, definitely not as much wax bloom as say a Prismacolor. I think it's because these pencils are not as soft. They actually reminded me the most, other than Holbein, they reminded me the most of the Nioni Mark Art pencils and the Arteza pencils. So if you have, actually they remind me more of, of the Nioni Mark Art than anything just because they have such a nice range of pastel tones. The Arteza pencils have more vibrant, um, more of your darker, more vibrant colors. So um, if you had say, if you already had the, the, the Nioni or the Marker set of 120, I would say you probably could pass on these. Um, unless you really love them and you want to expand your collection, I don't know what they would be. I have the, um, I have the 72 set, but I've already kind of like mixed it into my uh, my pencil rack, so I don't have them all out. But I can show you, I can show you what they look like side by side. So there's an Arteza, there's a a uh, Nioni. Let me find a tribute here. We can look at these side by side. Um, so those were very similar. So I would say if you like firmness, lay down, very, very similar in feel. So I would say if you like those pencils, you'll like these. But if you don't like those pencils, then you probably won't like these. And I also have to mention the Artezas that I'm comparing them to are the 2019 version that are extremely water resistant. I know they have a, they have renumbered their pencils and I've heard a lot of, um, a lot of comments about them not being water resistant, uh, them not being, yeah, them not being water resistant anymore. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. They've switched production or recipe or something along the ways. But from what I have, that's what they feel like. So if you have, um, if you have an older set of Artezas and you like them, and you don't want to risk going with Arteza again because you're afraid that their formulation has changed, you could use the uh, the tributes. They're more expensive though, so you know the the Marco tributes are more expensive than these other brands that I'm mentioning. That's the other thing. The whole binds are way more expensive, but um, like us. 120 Artezas, I think, is probably around 60. 120 Mark Art, I think, is like $40. So those are much more affordable options for a very comparable pencil. But you can see they look very similar. They all have capped ends. They're all, well, actually, I think that the, uh, 
Arteza looks like it might be a little bit beefier. I think the mark art might be actually a little bit smaller. The um, I think the mark art might be a touch smaller. The Arteza and the Marco seem to be the same size barrel. Um, they all have silver printing. Gosh, they all could be the same pencil. Let me tell you. Let me tell you the truth there. They all could be the same pencil. <laughs> like the way they feel and just the way that they're capped ends and um, and the size and the, you know, double primed. They're primed and painted. Yeah, they might all be the same pencil. Maybe the marker isn't. Is the marker primed? I can't tell if it's primed. Those two are. But they felt very similar to use and um, the tribute's more expensive. So it's up to you whether you, are, you know, you can compare the color selections and see what you think. Um, but I like them. I like them. They're kind of expensive for not having open stock, though, because, I mean, like, when I bought my Polychromos 120 set, but, again, this was, like, you know, many, many, many decades ago. <laughs> really, two decades ago. You know, I paid about 120 for it for 120 pencils. So, um, obviously, you're not going to find that deal now. But, uh, you know, they had the regular price on this as 198.93, which you're looking at the price of polychromos at that point and um you'd really want to think hard about that especially where you can't replace a pencil when you use it up that said i think they're a nice pencil i gotta make sure i get the right one in that box though golly i don't want to be putting i don't want i've done that before i've mixed up my pencils the margarets and the artisas before um so you know they're they're a nice pencil i really like them they're kind of on the pricey side but uh, who knows? I mean, as pencils get more popular, sometimes the, the price drops. And I've seen the prices fluctuate a lot on AliExpress. Um, so if you were interested in these, I'd probably recommend just kind of keep your eyes out and see what they go to. Maybe you're maybe when you, this review goes live and you're looking, they're like $80. And you're like, wahoo, you know, sign me up. Um, you know, that's up to you. All I could say is I really like them. Um, they were kind of a, uh, they kind of feel like a, a hidden gem. And hopefully when they become more popular and more available, the price goes down a little bit. But if you, if you like an opaque pencil, which I love opaque pencils, um, these are a really nice option, especially where they have so many lighter tones that are kind of hard to find. So I like them. I give them, I, I would give them five out of five stars for quality. Um, I wish there were a little bit less money, but there's a lot of quality in the packaging and in the pencils. So, um, yeah, if, if they're interested, if you're interested in these, I would say, you know, give them a shot if you you know, if you can afford them and you think they're a fair price for what you get. Um, I probably wouldn't pay that much for uh, for pencils that I couldn't get open stock, but that's just me. And I also prefer a softer pencil in general. So, you know, I would be going to the Prismacolors just because I like a softer pencil. But that, again, is personal preference. I didn't notice any issues with uh, wrist fatigue while I was coloring with these. You don't have to put a lot of pressure to get color down, but when you, when you start getting saturated color like this, you do have to burnish a bit. So if you have arthritis and you want this look, that may be a little frustrating um, or painful. But um, other than that, they're good pencils. I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.